Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fantasy Football Fix YouTube channel. My name is FPL Phillips and this is going to be my Game Week 5, I suppose, wildcard draft. Looking onwards from Game Week 5, the team I would have if I were playing the wildcard chip this week. But as this is an Eddie versus the Algorithm episode, we're going to be bringing a special edition to you where I'm going to be taking a look at the AI algorithm generated wildcard draft itself before comparing it with my own team and what I would personally have if I were activating the chip this week. So which team does the algorithm think is going to score the most points over the next couple of game weeks? Basically, that's all we're going to be covering in two days on this week's episode of Eddie versus the Algorithm. As we're in the international break, we've got a spare week where we can manage this special video for you all. So make sure to drop a like on the video if you do enjoy it subscribe if you're new around here but let's get into things before we have any more messing around and if you want to check out the algorithm team for yourselves and how it may change before the deadline you know if there's injuries or anything like that or just the predicted points get altered then this team may change you can do so via the links down below in the description you can have access anytime to all the algorithm and AI projections as well as all the teams from all of our elite managers that we're following along as well so if you don't trust the computer then you can trust some humans who've got history of finishing very high up in the FPL leaderboard so that is all available for you as well if you want to do so as mentioned before the links are down below in the description but let's get into having a look at what team the computer is cooking up for its wildcard draft and we have actually spoiled things a little bit with the bench down there but it does actually not reveal too much with regards to the team so we'll move into having a look at which goalkeeper is going to be partnered up with Turner who is down there on the bench as a 4.0 million keeper and between the sticks is going to be Leno who we did actually cover a little bit in yesterday's video I actually rated him myself I had longer hair back then I've had a haircut since but I did still have the same opinion on the Fulham fixtures where I think they look very strong over the next couple of game weeks and going for Leno at 4.5 million doesn't seem Team too unwise at all. He's got that save and bonus points potential. I really like him and 22.8 predicted points from game weeks 5 to game week 9 is the range we're looking at here as you can see in very small text in the top right. He's predicted a very nice amount of points. So yeah, I really like him. A little bit of a differential one in the defense that not too many managers will have the opportunity to invest in at the moment. We've seen the kind of mega hauls over the last season and a bit. I suppose that Leno has managed to pick up double digits on a numerous amount of occasions, even in fixtures where on paper Fulham may not keep a clean sheet. They do end up doing so, and then he grabs three bonus, a couple of save points as well, and you've got a lot of points coming in from your goalkeeper. So I really do like him, and I think there's some upside there. It also saves you from doubling up on the defense that you're not ready to invest in too much. Before we move on to the rest of the defense, I just wanted to mention that with Turner, there is that other keeper who has a nice sign for Nottingham Forest. Personally, I think I would maybe urge away from Turner if I was on a wild card and I would own Ariola at 4.1 million instead just because I think he is more assured of minutes and to be honest, Ariola has been looking very good and West Ham as a defence and as a team in general haven't been looking too bad either. So I would probably have Ariola, but you're going to get to see my draft in just a moment anyway. So we'll stick with covering this side for now. We've got two defenders down there on the bench. So Henry of Brentford and Botman, assuming he's back from injury, which it looks like he will be back for game week five is in here to cover the Newcastle defence. Will there be another Newcastle defender in here? There isn't going to be, which I find maybe a little bit surprising. Perhaps the algorithm is putting quite a lot of weight on the fact that, you know, Newcastle haven't looked brilliant defensively over the first couple of games. They just have some very nice fixtures coming up now where they haven't had the strongest games so far. It's chosen to go for some far more attacking defenders instead. So Chilwell, Estupina and Adogi are the ones in here who I do really like the look of for all three of them. Estepinia would maybe be on the bench for me this week, which is why I was maybe thinking he might not even be in this side at all when I initially saw the defenders down there first on the bench. But Adogi is one that I really like. He's actually predicted the highest amount of 17.7 of these three defenders who are in the starting 11 as of right now. Chilwell is one that I'm taking with a little bit of caution at the moment. I don't think he's looked as good over the last two as he was in the first games. And what's been more concerning really is that his minutes have been a risk and he has been substituted off on a number of occasions for Mudrick or whichever wing is going to come off the bench for Chelsea. He's been shown that he can be sacrificed from that attack, even though that I believe and I think a lot of people believe he is actually rather good in that role. And I've also seen some Chelsea fans calling for him to be dropped. So Definitely not quite the option he was looking at the end of game week one and so forth. But Chilwell is still a pretty solid pick in my view. And of course, the Algon will be basing a heavy weight on the expected FPL points data per 90, where Chilwell has registered very strong numbers so far this campaign. 
In midfield, we've got the midfield five then of Mo Salah, Madison, Gibbs White, Saka, and Mbomo. And I think there are three in here who don't really need any debate or any convincing for me to tell you that they're good options to go for. And those are namely Madison, Saka, and Mbomo. Saka and Mbomo on penalties for their sides. Strong talisman. I think they'll be in pretty much every team, especially a wild card. Same with Madison. I think he'll also kind of be in the majority of drafts, whether that's alongside Son or maybe even instead of Son for some people. A lot of people are making their way towards that Spurs triple up of Adogi, Madison and Son, who misses out in this side, who is a big absentee from this eleven. And I think Gibbs White is the most shocking pick for me. Mo Salah does tend to make it into quite a lot of these algorithm sides just because he is that very consistent tick-along player who does tend to return even when Liverpool aren't at their best. And he's assured for minutes, should still be on penalty. So we've not seen uh, a one for Liverpool since he last missed that one and scored the rebound. So should, uh, you know, in, in those inverted commas because there's a slim chance, I suppose, the Sobersly or McAllister, whoever it ends up being, comes the spot kick taker for Liverpool but I don't really see that happening too much might upset Mo Salah I think that kind of caliber of player uh, I don't think it'll be anything to do uh, with him leaving as well which would be why he's not in this side because the algorithm's not going to have anything to do with transfers in the real world it's looking like he's going to stay at Liverpool anyway for so all intents and purposes we're treating it as him staying in but 30.6 predictive points is quite some distance ahead of all the other midfielders in this draft and all the other midfielders available for the algorithm to pick from in FPL right now. We've also got Gibbs White, who to be honest is the one that shocks me the most. Forest have a few nicer fixtures coming up. They've got the Burnley fixture. They still do have some tough games, however. And if I was going to go for the Forest attack, there's only one man I'd be investing in, and that was Awanai, who I did kind of mention a little bit in previous videos. So Gibbs White, the data isn't there for me at the moment. Even someone like a Martinelli, who's been performing pretty poorly in terms of expected FPL points, has actually outscored Gibbs White in that metric. And I've gone over and used the Opsisats tool to have a look at that. Gibbs White, he's got two assists so far, but hasn't looked like the kind of goal threat that we did see from him at times last season. So I'm a little bit surprised to see this one in here, but could end up being one of those mega punts from the algorithm that I've seen in the course of making a lot of these videos where it does come back to bite me and the algorithm has shown that it's right really in a lot of occasions. And then finally, we'll see the two forwards then and we've got Haaland and then also Visser, who I don't think will be too much of a popular one, to be honest, especially with the double up on Ibumo and Visser. Visser hasn't been substituted early quite as much as in previous seasons, just due to the fact really that Tony uh, isn't here anymore. Visser was coming off from the bench a lot last season as well. He has been missing good chances as well, so the data is there for him in terms of XG, etc. But I just think there is a slightly better forward that you can go for uh, at Manchester City. In fact, who we'll see in my team in just a moment, so I'm not spoiling it too much now. I also think Nick Jackson is still a good option. Teams like Bournemouth, who Chelsea go up against next, who play you know, on slightly more on the front foot, should lend themselves to being a good fixture for someone like a Jackson when he has the space in behind to be able to get those kind of chances that he should do hopefully a little bit better with than the one he seemed to get over the bar from an unmissable distance against Nottingham Forest. You can tell I'm not a salty owner myself, can't you? You really can. But yeah, that's going to wrap up the algorithm wildcard draft. Overall, I like the majority of it. I actually quite like how the defense rotates as well. I have covered this in a few of my FPL videos, you know, on, on different channels where you can rotate defenders like Chilwa, Estepinian, Adogi, and Henry and Botman. Those teams rotate very well together. You would consider starting Botman over Estepinian in this week, for example, but you can kind of invest in those Five defenders where some of them are slightly cheaper, but a lot of them are attacking anyway. Botman's the only one with less attacking threat in this draft. And you can get a really nice set of fixtures where you won't really have to use too many transfers there. You've got a very solid back five and you can prioritize your transfers towards the front midfielder and also the strikers as well. So that's what I really like. I like the strategy. I really like the defense for that reason. I like Leno in goal as well. Three of the midfielders, of course, Erling Haaland. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the ones are probably the ones that I'd be considering changing a little bit towards. And in fact, I have actually gone ahead and changed some of the defenders as well. I have gone with Leno myself in goal, and I have also gone with a few similar defenders. Adogi is definitely in my side, but I have invested in a different Newcastle asset in Fabian Share, just due to his goal threat last season where he was fantastic. Took a few set pieces as well. And then I've also gone for Zinchenko of Arsenal, who is one that I really wanted to own at the start of the season, to be honest. It was just unfortunate that he was injured. 
His data from last season did look the best of basically the Arsenal back line, and it probably will do, even in this you know inverting role that he ends up playing, whilst Thomas Partey is out at least. I really like the look of him, and he's a player that, because he was injured, not many people will own. So he can be a nice differential for you right now. But his predicted points total is very low, and I don't think it should be that low, given that the predicted lineups maybe need to be updated. But once they are updated, I can see that total maybe going up. So the one that the algorithm hasn't taken note of, one that I'm definitely taking note of myself, and hopefully uh, will end up performing for any of you who do choose to go with him. We'll reveal the bench now just so we can see the other two defenders. I have chosen to go without Ben Chilwell just few, due to a few of those reasons that I was struggling with holding on to him. And the wild card is a little bit of a chance where a majority of people own him right now to maybe take a risk and try and get ahead of the pack and where the current template is. So I've gone for Pinnock at Brentford who has looked slightly better in terms of data than Rico Henry so far since uh, Brentford have been playing the back four system that it looks like they're sticking with. And then we've got Anderson at Crystal Palace, who's had a lot of attacking chances so far and has looked very good. And I've also got Archer uh, as my third striker down there on the bench. In the midfield, we've got a midfield five where I've mentioned some of the players already, Madison, Saka and Mbomo, who were in the algorithm side. But I then have also gone for Hyun Min Son and then I've gone for Marcus Rashford at Manchester United. So... Rashford over Bruno was a difficult decision to make. Overall, I do just prefer Rashford as an asset. Now, Bruno's had exceptional underlying data. Should have scored a header uh, against Spurs. He should have scored, uh, got an assist for a Casemiro chance as well. There's been a lot of times where Bruno should have got FPR returns, but he's ended up dodging them. But I like the fact that Hoyland coming in now should be starting games, you'd hope, unless maybe he picks up another injury or something. But ultimately, Rashford's shifted back out to the left-hand side where he looks really good, where he scored that goal from against Arsenal. And I'm hoping that kind of stuff is going to continue because Rashford looks the best off the left wing. I think even with penalties going in Bruno's favour, that puts him above Bruno for me. And although he is that slight bit more in terms of cost, I think that Rashford is the superior FPL asset if I had to pick between the two, which I am doing for this side. Kilmin Son is one where I don't think it's 100% confirmed that he'll be playing through the middle, you know, throughout forever, which some people seem to be assuming a little bit. Brennan Johnson's come in, who could play through that middle, but Kilmin Son is one that I really do like, and I covered him uh, in the guide video yesterday, if you want to go and check out maybe a little bit more discussion with regards to Kilmin Son and my thoughts on him. But I've gone with him in the midfield, and then up front it is Haaland and then Alvarez, who I alluded to it being up front for my team earlier. So yeah, what I want you guys to let me know now with both teams revealed is which wildcard draft out of the two would you guys have? I want you to comment down below on the video. Let us know your thoughts on which draft you think is superior. And do you not rate either of them? Would you have something different? Are you currently on the wildcard ship and feel like you could share your draft that is better than either of these two teams? Then feel free to do so down below in the comments as mentioned. Make sure to check out all the tools available on fantasyfootballfix.com via the links down below in the description where you can access all the tools that the website has to offer. But yeah, with all that said and done, I wish you a happy rest of your day. Thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe if you're new around here. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Goodbye.